It's a How to Shoot Hybrid podcast discussing topics around photography, videography, and running a business. My name's Jules, and I'm here with Kieran. Hello. Hello Kieran. Back again. Uh, we, yeah, back again. Back again. Yes, who's back? Back again. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a really bad attempt at an Eminem song. Oh, um, no, I thought it was really good. You thought it was good. Uh, we really appreciate you being here with us. If you are new to the podcast, um, we're going to be talking today about a topic that's been in the wedding photography, videography news um, recently. Um, but first of all, Kieran, what have you been up to, mate? How's the last couple of weeks since we recorded? What have you been doing with yourself? Well, Jules, nothing. <laughs> Wife's wife's pregnant, so I'm uh, currently dealing with. <laughs> I can't even say it. I'm Issues. Currently, currently de- <laughs> dealing with. She's three weeks. She's three weeks, and then she's due. So she's fed up. So we're doing. Uh, she's ready. She's, she's ready. She's, she's ready. Ready, yeah. ready for the day. Yeah, she's ready for the day. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, just babysitting Luke and and whatnot. So. Yeah, uh, you know what, like, funnily enough, we said it before the podcast started, but I know this drama with uh, with Google, is it Google Reviews or something that's happening? Yeah, we'll call it, it's been called Google Gate, it's been termed Google, Google Gate, yeah. Okay, I, I don't even know what this is about, I've seen people chatting away to it, but I just haven't had time to even look into it, so I'm hoping you're going to fill me in a little bit on this one, Jules. I'm going to fill you in, yes. Excellent. So... Before before we kind of go into it, I'll just say that I don't know any of the, you know, I don't know this person personally. Um, and I don't, I've not been kind of personally affected by this, although there's still time for that to happen, which is part of what we will discuss um, going forward later on in the podcast. But essentially, um, there's been some chaos in the industry the last few weeks with different things happening. There was a a situation over in America, which has been termed sepia or sepia, however you say it, bride, which is all to do with a photographer delivering some photos to a couple and then the bride taking to TikTok to basically um, slag off this photographer's work slash editing style. And it's caused a big stink and it got in the news. And then over here in the UK in the last week, there's being another situation which has caused or created quite a lot of attention um, all around people's um, Google business accounts being suspended um, or removed completely. All to do with a kind of um, thing to do with terms and conditions. So the background is that if you've got a Google business and I'm assuming it's the same wherever you are in in the world but I'll I'll talk about it from a UK perspective so if you run your own business you run it from home you will potentially have set up a Google it used to be called Google my business I don't know it's I think it's just part of Google Maps now but it's basically like a, a profile on Google which is separate to your website and SEO but it's just a way of Google kind of indexing where your business is so that it shows up on Google Maps and if people search for it, so if people search for like wedding photographer, wedding videographer in whatever area, it will help you to come up on there, not just with your SEO on your website, but also on this profile. So it's a good thing to have and like as a background um, thing, if you don't have this, you know, if you've never set one of these up and you are a, a photographer or a videographer, it's a very useful tool. It's one of the things that we, or I would certainly advise someone to do if they were setting up a business. So I'm pretty sure you'll have one. Yeah. I've I've had one from the start. Most people do set them up. Um, now, what I didn't know and what a lot of people didn't know is that apparently if you are operating your business from your house, you're not allowed to put your address down. So you might be able to have one of those profiles, but you have to kind of put it as a service area mm-hmm. rather than actually putting your address down and listing it because apparently it's against the terms and conditions because a residential address cannot be a business address. That's part of the terms and conditions. I, I wasn't aware of, I've never 
fully read all those terms and conditions. I'm sure most people haven't. But apparently this is what's come out, um, you know, in, in this whole saga that's been going on in the last week. So basically, um, what's happened is somebody, another photographer, I'm not going to use any names, but another photographer has gone to onto a group and has basically somebody, I think someone was talking about having their Google profile like taken down. And this photographer has commented on there and basically admitted that he, as part of like educating other photographers and videographers, he's he educates them as part of an SEO tactic to report people, other photographers, for having their business address listed when they're, you know, on there, yeah. when it's a residential address and not a, you know, a photography studio, an actual proper business address. Um, and by doing so, you're able to get people's profiles taken down. And he's admitted on this on this wow. Facebook group that he's been teaching people to do this. Is he right? UK based? He's UK based. He's south. He's da down somewhere south, so not not kind of direct up here. But and then what's happened is, as a result of this, um, that's obviously attracted some attention, and then there's been this like you know discussion around it on there and people haven't been very happy about the fact that he's been doing this and they've been like giving him some shit about it but over the next few days what happens is all of a sudden shit loads of people's profiles start getting taken down all over the country not just near where this guy was but all over the place like tens if not hundreds of people photographers videographers people that me and you will know right have been having their um, profiles suspended and taken down. It's caused an absolute shitstorm. And everybody's been out for this guy because everyone has kind of traced it back to him doing this education and teaching other people. But maybe what's happened is there's two things that could have happened. Well, three. One is that it's just a big coincidence and Google were doing something of any way where they've been like removing, you know, going through and removing people who've got these business addresses. The second thing could be that it's because this guy's been teaching everybody or teaching a bunch of people, but then they've started, lots more people have started to see this post and they've started using that tactic too. So that's why everyone's businesses have started getting taken down. Or the third thing that I've kind of got a, a, a kind of a, a thought on is that, People have then been taking, people have been then giving advice out to go into their profile and change their profile. So like take off their address mm -hmm. and put down service area. And the lot, obviously lots of people then start doing that to try and protect themselves. And I think that maybe some people have had the profile suspended or taken down because they've taken that step. Right. And it's kind of, there's something built into Google's software or whatever algorithm that it needs checking if somebody starts making those sorts of uh, changes to the profile. So mm -hmm. it just temporarily suspends them until like, you know, Google can check that it's not some fraudulent activity or something. I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, Does way. all that make sense? You followed so far. I'm following. Um, so basically, this guy, yeah. this this photographer, has basically attracted a lot of negative attention to himself, and he's not gonna come on there and held his hands up and gone. That was a really stupid thing to do. I'm sorry, if everybody. Um, it he's, almost he's to me it comes across as a bit of a it. yeah, comes across as a bit of a um, desperate tactic. Yes. And that's yeah. what everybody's view is, is like, you know, it's kind of created a lot of animosity because people are like, this is not cool. We're, we're you know, we're a community. Yeah. We shouldn't be trying to screw each other over just to get a bit of extra business. So what happens when Obviously, they get taken down, he gets boosted up on Google to first, first place on Google or something? Yeah, well, essentially, is if that, you've that's got... The, if that's you, the aim for them. I guess so. I guess if the if if there's if there's in an area and that area's got like twenty thirty photographers yeah. or videographers whatever, and people are searching for a photographer videographer, obviously the fewer people that there are with Google yeah. profiles, the more you know, forget the SEO out. stuff because that's kind of separate. But the, the, the they've got Google profiles, the, the more chance you've got of coming up yeah. as one of the top ones. So. No way. 
it's a very desperate tactic, it I is guess. A desperate and, tactic. and it's not something that I would ever I would ever want to do. Um but I'm not a bell end, so I I, yeah. I just couldn't ever imagine doing that to people. Is is your it residential be... address registered so under the business? I'm not or... gonna start changing it at the moment. And the reason is is because I I am like thinking I think some people, because the amount of people that all of a sudden started coming on to the groups and saying, I've had mine taken and I've had mine taken. Right. I'm thinking, this is crazy. Like, how have all these people, like, ended up, you know, because this wasn't happening before this. Yeah. No one was talking about it before. So I wonder if it's because people have been going in and start and changing things in their profile. Yeah, that's possibly. why they've been yeah. suspended. So that's why I'm not going to go in and start yeah. messing around with it. Now, as far as I'm I'm aware, I think mine is down a service area, so I'm probably okay, but I don't know. I don't and yeah. I don't, I don't want to mess with it. Um I did have a business premises when I set my Google profile yeah. up. You know, so I I did have a business premises. I've also got a limited company and you know, I've got a bit more of an audit trail in terms of proving that I actually do run my business from this address yeah. and it's not just me, you know, me, you know, I think the reason they do it is because they don't want fake businesses. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, like, this is from Google's perspective. Um, I don't know, do you know about yours? Is, do you think yours is? I, to be fair, it was probably about two years ago now I, I took my took my address down. I didn't have it on there. So. Right. I'll probably be so then. So then you you're the probably okay as well. Way. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't. I mean, like, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't have really panicked me, even if it did get taken down. Uh, like the majority of my bookings are through social media anyway. So my website is just a uh, another clarification of like how legit I am. Um, so yeah. I don't really get that many inquiries from Google anyway. So it wouldn't have. I mean, like, I'd I'd like I wouldn't like to lose my position and whatnot, but. I wouldn't have. I, I did see a couple of people threatening over it and stuff like that. I don't think I'd have worried too much about it. There was a it, lot of people yeah, threatening over it. A bit of it. a, yeah, and, a bit of a shit tactic to use, really. That and, and that and that I think is the the one of the big things is that this really, it's re, you know, it's really upset some people. Yeah. And it's really caused them to to be quite distressed about like, it. You know what? Like, a, and like, that's it's a it's a it's a. It's a lot of work getting yourself ranked up on Google and whatnot, so to have it taken down is shit, isn't it? All that yeah, time, exactly. And and that's that's the thing. And we'll we'll come on to this, you know, later in the podcast. But it, that's the problem with um, when you're running like a, a small business by yourself. It's not like you're running a big company and you've got yeah. lots of people to kind of discuss things with and take that you know, like takes some of the responsibility and takes some of the um, some of the shit that happens, you're yeah. kind of taking it all on yourself. And if something small happens, it can feel quite big. And, and we'll co- obviously go on to that. Um, but that that's basically this big thing that's been happening and the implications for everyone's business that it's had. Yeah. And I don't know, I don't want to, so I'm not going to talk openly about what I think of the guy that's sort of done it in, in on the episode because I don't know him. And, Although I totally agree with how pissed off everybody's been, and I do agree that what he's done is really, really bad. Like I think you know, I can never condone it. But I also, yeah, what was interesting to observe was how quickly everybody jumped on this and was like mm-hmm. out for this guy's blood. And um, <laughs> I don't really want to start of talk about like <laughs> obviously. So when we're recording this, the day before, I don't know if you see it, you will, probably will have seen this on news because you can't really miss it, but like someone t- tried to assassinate Trump. Yeah. So like, you know, like the polarization stuff, you know, people re- like it, with social media, it's very quick for everybody to kind of like gang mm-hmm. up and yeah. really like go for someone. So although I kind of do, I don't disagree with everybody, how the feeling towards that person, it's quite, scary you know just how like um how quick it is to cancel someone or how quick it is to like go after somebody um and and that that's you know like i think what not not that we'd not that we would necessarily do anything like this guy's done 
but it's really easy, isn't it, for like everyone to kind of turn against someone. And yeah, it is, um, yeah. this second, the second thing that I'll talk about. So this sepia bride story that's been happening in the, in the America. I don't know if you've seen any of this. No, uh, you, you briefly mentioned it previously, but, but you've I not like seen any of the stuff. I've not seen any of it now because there's like so much stuff on it. I mean, I, I didn't know anything about it and I was seeing posts on social media. Um, I'm going to Google it while we're talking. about the sepia bride story. Um, yeah, you have, a, have a look at it. But like it even went into like in America, it even went into like mainstream media, you know, like it was being reported about on TV and news channels and yeah. things. Um, and it's been, you know, there's been so many like YouTube videos and all sorts made about this. And it's it's been a big discussion topic in the industry because it's been like, well, what does everybody think about what this bride's done? What does everyone think about the photographers editing? You know, and it's turned into this like big, big kind of like thing. And essentially what it is, is this photographer has been hired by a couple to do the wedding, has done the wedding, has delivered some photos. The couple have been fine. The couple have been really happy. In fact, like the way it's been described and even the bride herself has said she was like really happy with these photos when she first got them. And then it's over time, she started to sort of think, I'm not actually sure I like the editing of these photos because they don't look true to color. You know, the way the, the style of the photographer's edit was quite warm or very warm, let's say. Yeah. Um, and so that's why it's been sort of deemed sepia bride because it's got like a sepia sepia tone to the photos. Um, I'm trying to have a quick look at some of them now. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's just, a, to me, it's a style. It's, it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but to me, you, you book that photographer and as long as, yeah. and this is what everyone's obviously discussing, as long as it's representative of their portfolio and the work that Absolutely, they've shown, yeah. If you hire that person, that's what you that's what you're after, isn't it? You're hiring yeah. them because you like the look of those photos. It's not it shouldn't really ever come to what it's come to. But essentially the photographer ends up in this dispute with the couple and probably where the photographer's kind of not handled it perfectly, and, and we'll come on to this because I've got my own personal experiences of mm -hmm. this. But it's like uh the communication's probably you know, broken down and there's probably been some issues kind of like come out of that. And essentially the, what the bride, you know, wanted, it's hard to say what the bride really wanted from, from all of this, but essentially she sent the photographers ended up sending her some raws and then she's re-edited them. And she preferred the, obviously the bride prefers her own edits to the photographers and has then gone on TikTok and made a boatload of videos on TikTok. And this is how it's got viral, basically pulling this, photographer's edits apart and yeah. saying you know how can she have got these edits so wrong but it's it's a style yeah. she's done that style because that's how she edits yeah um so yeah it's um but it, it it's just interesting because it's it's got so big so quickly i you hope know, it's, it's uh, at the end of the day it's it's like not is it a, know, well, it's not yeah. will it be big, negative against the on, photographer or it's kind of mixed. That's the thing. Yeah. It's mixed. It's like, you know, people saying, well, obviously you're going to get people, photographers, non-photographers saying who don't yeah. like that style are going to be saying they're dog shit, those photos. You know yeah. what I mean? They're going to be yeah, doing yeah. that, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Then you're going to have other people who are going to say, well, actually, I like that style. And that's yeah. just, if, as long as that was how she said she was going to edit the photos, as in she showed yeah. examples in her portfolio of edited photos like that, then that's what the bride could have expected to get. Yeah. So, yeah, I won't, I won't kind of labour on it anymore, but it's just, it, to me, it's crazy how, you know, it's crazy how polarised people get and how much they jump on the bandwagon and you've yeah. got like, you know, there's so many ways people can throw their opinions in without really knowing full facts and mm -hmm. everything now. Yeah. Um, and uh, and sort of like the behavior of people, like should the bride be going, she, she can do whatever she wants, can't she? But should she be going on and making TikToks sort of slagging the photographer off? I don't know. It's, it's, uh, I don't, I, I, I personally, I don't think, I don't think she should now. I think, uh, I don't know. If I was that photographer, I'd potentially be looking to, uh, 
seek legal advice on that one for and that's effect, exactly affecting, and that's exactly where she kind of took it yeah, and affecting her business and whatnot. Um, I don't yeah. know. I think I think the majority of photographers have all been in a fairly similar situation once or twice in the past where a bride and groom haven't been happy with the the edit or whatnot. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's, I suppose it's just the way you deal with it. I've dealt with it in a terrible way and learned from it. <laughs> well, I have. I didn't. I didn't. Do you uh, want? Do you want to, not, share, not do you want to share any of that? You don't have to go into massive uh, detail. But I think. I think probably it was more. It was more the fact that I gave into them and tried to help them achieve something that I didn't really offer. So it right. was. It was the photos it's similar. They wanted. They saw my like portfolio. They booked me. Took the photos. A couple of months later, they decided that they didn't like that style. So ended up getting back in touch wanting a re-edit well asking me what I could do so I suggested I do a re-edit asked them for a couple of examples of um, what they do like which was completely opposite style to what I did at the time um, and it just ended up going back and forth for months and it ended up just being an absolute pain and she we we, we both just couldn't find this neutral agreement um, so I don't know I think in the future, I wouldn't be so quick to. I'd, I'd definitely set some more ground rules out. I think and give them one one option to edit. And yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a trick. It is a tricky one, isn't it? I think I gave them and too much. That... I think I gave them too much leeway. I think my issue was, and then right. it was it was hard to pull so it back th- after that. Right. And do you think so? You, so because you've been through that experience, you feel like you'd handle it differently now. Yeah, yeah. I'd uh, well, to be fair, I'd put out. Uh, I'd yeah, I'd give them a um, what's the word? I don't even know what the word is. I'd, I'd explain to them that this is the situation. You can have one re-edit. Tell me the yeah. photos that you want re-editing. You have an X amount of photos that are going to be re-edited, and I'll re-edit them. And this will be this will be the final edit. That'll that'd pretty much so, be what I so do. I'd, I'd even maybe say something like, "Yeah, you need to, basically you need to take you need to take control of the situation, don't you? And tell them what's gonna what's gonna happen. Otherwise, they're just they're never gonna be happy. They're gonna want changes all the time, constantly, nonstop. And what what do you think was the the real issue? And the reason I say real issue is because yeah. I think. Uh, there is potentially the issue that it appears to be, but I think the real issue is sometimes uh, this would be my experience mm-hmm. and from hearing and seeing things happen with other people as well as my own my own kind of experience. I've only had like one, well, I'll talk about two bad experiences, but yeah. one directly linked to work. Yeah. And it's, it's usually not, it's not straightforward as like, all of a sudden they don't like your edit. And it's no, something it's to do not, with the day, didn't go out there before it was not. Like, you know. I knew exactly what mine was. It wasn't. It wasn't even the editing. They originally wanted to get married in the summer. They ended up getting married in the winter, in a place with, which they described as light and airy, but it was dark mahogany wood. I mean, have you been to yeah. Allerton Castle? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's not yeah. a light airy venue. It's very dark. It's just not. Yeah. Yeah, it's very dark. So it was a complete contrast to what they originally wanted. So I, I knew instantly it wasn't. It wasn't my. It wasn't my style that they were after, but I just, yeah, I tried to, uh, I tried to achieve something that wasn't a hundred percent possible, just to keep them happy. Yeah, that was and my, that was my. Done, uh, yeah. We've all done that, yeah. haven't we? And you do, yeah. you do learn from that. Just, just yeah, you, you do. don't need to, you don't even need to learn anything else, do you? You just learn that um, some jobs are not, you know, some jobs, some couples, they're not for you. Yeah, um, exactly. We've all been yeah. there where we've been like, right, no, no, I'm, I want to do, I want to do these weddings because I want to, I want to get, you know, I want to do as many weddings as possible. I want the money, yeah. blah blah blah, and and you kind of learn um, from those situations yeah. that it's not, you shouldn't do it like that. Um, tell me, tell me your experience. But, um, the one with the, the one that was directly linked to work, was. 
the short, I'll try and give you the short version because yeah. I, I tend to like telling a big tale though. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, the short version would be book this, book this couple, obviously dealt with the bride and her mum. So I'd never spoke to the guy and um, everything seemed cool. And then the wedding was a few days before Christmas and she didn't fill out any of my questionnaires and stuff for ages. She left it right to the last minute. She kept canceling the video calls that we were going to have to like discuss things again. Like she, she, it was about three days before the wedding, bearing in mind it's like it's two days before Christmas that the wedding's happening or something like that. It's close to it, close to Christmas. And so I didn't see the answer to the questions and I didn't have the video call till really late. And then I was like, I came off that having read the questionnaires and listened to what was said and thing thinking, Oh my God, this is going to be a nightmare because I just thought I'm not like I, she was saying she wanted really relaxed, really chilled, but she was just giving these mixed messages of like listing things in this questionnaire, like photos that were so staged and so like they would need to be so engineered. Yeah. Right. Um, like real, I mean like really specific stuff to do with like photos that she'd seen on Pinterest and things, but like really specific ones where you would have to, it'd take you like 10, 15 minutes to set it up because it mm -hmm. involved the whole bridal party. Um, but this was totally opposite to kind of my style of doing things, but also the way that um, she'd been saying she wanted the wedding captured because she just wanted it to be dead relaxed and she didn't want to be posing for loads of photos, but then gave me this list and there was other stuff in there. Yeah. And uh, so I was like kind of worrying about it beforehand on the day. It was actually for that time of year, it was a really nice day, but it was cold because it is at that time of year in the UK. And um, she didn't want to spend any time outside. She kept moaning and saying she was cold and wanted to go inside and just didn't get, like wouldn't go on the grass in her dress. All right. Even though it wasn't like really, it wasn't really shitty weather, so it would have been fine. Um, but it just won't go on the grass. And so like this gorgeous venue where you'd have got all these stunning images and it would have been great. And she just was so hot, you know, and even tried with her, kept saying, if, you know, if you want this, you're going to have to come outside and let me kind of yeah. get, get these photos for you. Anyway, um, I, it was after the wedding. She was disappointed because it didn't have half of the stuff that she obviously wanted to, yeah. even though we'd tried to get it. Um, and then it just went into completely different territory of like pulling apart like images and saying, there's no images of this, there's no images of that. But it was one of them where, you know, she was like getting ready and everything. Yeah, it, yeah, was just, yeah. it was, it was, everything about it was difficult. Um, and uh, even down to saying things like, um, I love the photos of my husband getting ready because they're out they're like they're having a great time and they're all smiling and laughing. But, all the girls look miserable. Yeah. We look like we're having a shit time. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you, like were, a, you, know, you were miserable. What do you want me to say to that? I've, I've had that one. I have had that one. That's yeah. That frustrating ceremony. It's, like every, she was, she was 45 minutes late. It was in a church. It was winter. Everyone's freezing, like freezing. And then everyone shivering. was pissed off to be there. Everyone was pissed off. She arrives. I get the photographs. Everyone just wants to get warm and, and leave and get to the venue. And she's complaining that everyone looks pissed off in the background. It's like, I, I can't interrupt the ceremony and tell everyone to smile. It's just not... Yeah, bizarre, isn't yeah. it? Bizarre. Yeah. So it, I think it's just a lot of, a lot of people's list. expectations are slightly unrealistic. Yeah. That That's exactly what it is. Sometimes people have got such a, a fixed, very specific kind of image of how their day is going to pan out, how everything's going to look. And then obviously how that's going to look on photos after. Um, yeah. And we're there to capture it. Like we're there to document the day. Some people will do more to influence the day. You know, some photographers, mm -hmm. filmmakers will do more to influence the day than others. I've never pretended that I... I'm going to be posing you within an inch of your life to do X, Y, and Z. Plus it wouldn't yeah. have made any difference to this person because she didn't want to be taken. She didn't want to have a photo taken. She didn't want to be outside. So, um, it wouldn't have helped, but yeah, there wasn't, there wasn't a lot of portraits, but then she just ripped into like loads of stuff saying, this is wrong with this. And, and I, I ended up responding to it by uh, making a video 
where I oh, talked yeah, I remember to you Cameron. telling me this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and basically went through every single point that she'd raised. And there was probably about 30 or 40 points on this list. Yeah. And just went through explaining, even, even drawing some diagrams about locations of light, where the light was. Cause she was like, why did you take, why, why didn't you take the photos in this location? Because I would have gone to that location. And I was like saying, cause the light was in the wrong place. And so like my, part of my job is to say this is the right location lighting wise plus we've yeah. had to walk quite far to get to that location and it would have been shit light so that's why i didn't want to use it but yeah um mm -hmm. that one was really weird because she was so pissed off and then i sent this video never heard from her again um, yeah so that Had was no odd comeback, maybe. because you would think someone's so pissed off that you, you know they'd you, maybe not um then at the same time as that, it's like it all happened at once. I had another one, which was nothing to do with me in terms of like work because, um, and like, just to go back to that one, if I, if I had done something wrong or I could have done something better, I'd, I'd have owned up to it in terms of like, I I'm sorry. And what can I do to try and make it up to you? But I knew that I'd done my best. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, ha I hadn't like not mm -hmm. done a good job. It's just that it probably wasn't, yeah. you know, what she thought it would be. And that was, that was, you know, there was a big part of that that was down to her. Um, the other yeah. thing, so this other job, it was someone who canceled in COVID and never heard anything back from them. And they basically said, you know, do we get his deposit back? Which was only a couple of hundred quid. And they basically said, um, you know, cause I've got insurance. So I'll just add it to the list of in insurance claims that I've got to make. And I just said, well, it's non-refundable. And I'd already moved their date three or four times. Mm -hmm. And we were now not in COVID anymore and they could have had their wedding. So I would have happily given it back if they could, if they had to cancel their wedding, but it was now a, a fact that it was, we we're out of COVID, the wedding could have happened and they decided not to do it. So I just yeah. said, and you said, you've told me you've got insurance. So uh, yeah, unfortunately it's non-refundable. And I didn't think anything of it cause she never came back. And then 18 months later, I start getting emails from the fella, um, which started off as an email, which was quite demanding out of nowhere. And I sort of like wrote a really long explanation and was really kind of professional about it. And then they got a shitty response back. And then it turned into like this, ridiculous exchange where he was being really really nasty and shitty with me and then it turned into letters to my home address and yeah and they were trying to take me to court but yeah by that point i was quite i was kind of like let's go to court then because i know I, I know i've done all my research i know that i'll win this at court mm -hmm. i've done because i've done nothing wrong contractually and i know that morally i've done the right thing because I, I would have given you money back had you cancelled your wedding in COVID, but you didn't. You cancelled your wedding way after yeah. COVID had finished. So yeah. So it's it's bad because did you hear did you hear back really from them then or? on Facebook and my Google thing. Um I, right. I never went to court. Never went to court, but they they kept they kept threatening for a while in different ways, emails, letters. Yep. You know, like I got a a letter that had been written it wasn't a from a proper solicitor, but it was written in legal speak. So they'd had yeah. some advice on how to write this letter or they'd tried mm -hmm. to put it together themselves. Um, yeah. And, and then they just, they would, but they'd already left me a load of really bad reviews that were kind of like proper slanderous. Um, so that messed all my Google right. reviews up because I had five star reviews. And, and now if you look on my Google reviews, it's 4.9 because I've got this one really crappy review. Outrageous. Same on my face, but you reviews. can't, you can't get rid of it. It's either, just, can you? you can't. And so that's, that's, that's kind of where I wanted to take the conversation now because it's just stuff like that is ridiculous. So we put our hands, we put our hands in Google, you know, like, um, no, not our hands. We're in Google's hands. You know, we, we, mm -hmm. we kind of, yeah. it's great to have these tools to help our business, but then we, we can't, we have no control over that stuff. Yeah. You know, it's quite, it's quite sort of scary in a way. So you look at the whole thing of people having the profiles taken down um, and how much, I, I know how much these reviews pissed me off mm -hmm. um, because I couldn't get, I couldn't 
even though they were false, um, I couldn't get them taken down because they weren't breaching any of the terms and conditions yeah, that Google had in place. It's very frustrating. Um, so, but like when you think about how much stuff we rely on in terms of, you know, like social media, I mean, what happens if your Instagram gets taken down and that's yeah. your main that'd be, I'd be, I'd be in trouble then if my social media, uh, to be fair, it has happened before where, uh, it's been, I don't know if it was hacked or what, I'm not quite sure what happened, but I remember trying to log on once and it just wasn't there and it took a good four or five days to get it back again. And I bet you were really sort of concerned about that because yeah it was yeah yeah because it's, it's a big part of marketing it's, it's huge it? yeah yeah it is so yeah i don't know what happened on that well yeah got it back thankfully. and that's what i mean it's, just, it's the same with google yeah you know like yeah. I, I i do have a, a quite a nice mix of you know like marketing channels yeah. like i don't i wouldn't say it's all stacked on one in particular mm-hmm. but just the fact that all of this stuff is not it's not really anything you can control. No, if somebody not. wants to leave you a shitty review, there's very little you yeah. can do about it. If somebody wants you to, if somebody like, you know, for whatever reason, if you if Instagram say you've breached something and they take your profile down, there's not an awful lot you can do about it. You, know? you can you can dispute reviews, can't you? Um, from, from what I learned from that, there wasn't, unless they do something which it's it's very specific about what breaches their rules. Right. Okay. I'm assuming so that. I'm got assuming to that if you say happen... something very offensive. Right. Okay. But so what what happens then if someone puts a really bad review on your Google that is just like a like a troll? Not you've never worked for them before, and they just want to put. Can you have that removed? Yeah. Um. I'm not sure if you would get it, but you might be able to try. That's insane, but I'm not saying you would definitely succeed. That's what I mean. It is yeah. insane, and we all rely on this stuff. And, you know, to kind of go a bit wider than that, you know, like this this, this guy, this, this photographer who's been teaching people yeah. about this loophole that means they can get other people's things removed. Like, th- that's like so little effort. Um, and... There's so many things like that, like people are leaving these reviews and there's not really an awful lot you can do about it because they would have to breach it by, it'd have to be something obscene or offensive um, because wh- whether something's accurate or not, you know, like yeah. even, even if it's just complete made up fake, I don't know if they'll actually remove it. Seems absolutely bizarre that, doesn't it? It does, but it's their rules, isn't it? It's not ours. Yeah, yeah. It's not we can't control it. That's what's scary. And so for me, when you think about how much stuff, can you imagine? You know, if something gets hacked, like what? What about all your, all your images that are in your galleries, or yeah. like you know your CRM system goes down and you've got all your data. Yeah, that's the fear. All your, the CRM you know, system so goes down. There's stuff that we put yeah. in in kind of the hands of third parties that yeah. we can't control and. It is quite, um, it's quite concerning. Yeah, it is. And that, that's that's one of the things for me that it brought up was thinking, you know, someone just can remove your Google thing for some like loophole that you've, and it might be accurate that you can't do this because it's part of the terms and conditions, but it's still, it's not very fair, is it? You know what I mean? No. It's not giving you the opportunity to kind of, set things straight properly but hopefully people get no, the it doesn't get sound, their uh, pr- profiles back yeah hopefully people get the profiles back and it, but there's still people sort of like even today a post you know it's still going on people are getting the profiles removed even still today. happening I've seen a few posts about it so crazy it's a worry because like, for all i know it does happen to me or you you know we don't know do we yeah um, no no so yeah, I think the the main thing, if anyone's listening and this has happened to them, it, I think the main thing is, it might seem like a big thing, but you've just got to not kind of panic and not kind of think it's the end of the world because there might be, you know, there might be ways that it comes back. You can get it back, get it sorted. Same if someone leaves you a bad review, like I've been talking about. Do you know what? I thought them leaving that review and me going down from five stars to four point something would be like, oh, I was devastated. 
you know? Yeah. Because I've never, yeah. I've never done all. You wrong think everyone's going to focus either, on that one, really. uh, one bad review? You do, and nobody does. No one yeah. gives a shit. No. If anything, it's probably yeah. like makes it more credible, more legit. And, and, yeah. I, and I, I did. I heard somebody talking on another podcast saying that for them, if if they were doing research and they saw someone had, you know, a bad review, it would make it more credible, mm-hmm. you know, because like no, nobody's like perfect. And then yeah. if they read the response to that bad review, that would yeah. tell them a lot more about how much they could trust the Yeah, supplier. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a fair than, point. Than yeah. the actual bad review itself. Yeah. So I did put quite a, a long review on, um, a long response on that. Which probably, you know, does say a lot more about me than it does about the person who wrote the yeah. bad review. Yeah. So, yeah. So these these people so, that have lost their Google accounts then, there must be a way for them to get it back. Or do they have to reapply? I think some people are talking about setting new ones up. Some people have been waiting for them to come back on. Mm-hmm. I know that there's been people saying, this has happened to me before. It went down and and, and I, I had to like wait to get it back, but it did come back on and I got all my reviews back on there and everything. Some people have been giving advice saying, you've got to try and submit certain pieces of evidence that kind of prove, you know, that you are at that address, prove yeah. that you have got a business. It's obviously easier if you if you're a limited company like me because you can actually give them your business number and you, mm-hmm. you they can Google can actually see that you've got a you've got a record on company's house and everything. Yeah. Whereas obviously yeah. if you're a sole trader, it's a little bit harder to prove that you're mm-hmm. actually a legitimate business. But I suppose if you've got some documentation, if you've got like letters that are addressed to you yeah. and the business at that at that um, address, you know. You just got to try and submit as much evidence. What an effort! As you can what a faff! I know, and then probably change your thing from having your address on there to a service area. Yeah, yeah. but the thing with honest, Google as well that I've learned is that it's not it's not a it's not a quick overnight thing. No. Like it can take can take days, if not weeks, can't it? Really? So yeah, yeah. There's going to yeah. be some pissed off people out there. Yeah. So yeah, that's been the drama, mate. And I just thought it was kind of interesting to talk about because the, I mean, I just can't, I can't believe, nothing really surprises me anymore, but I just can't believe what length some people will go to, Yeah, you know, to like do other people over just to kind of, you know, make themselves have a slightly better chance, better chance. of getting yeah. work. I mean, that's, that's proper desperate. And it then is like, desperate, you know, yeah. obviously. Yeah. You're always going to have, you're always going to have, um, I guess if you're in business and you're doing like a customer service job like we are, you're always going to have people that it, it's impossible to, for every single person to be happy because yeah. it's human nature, isn't it? Mm-hmm. To like, like I've met some people who they're just always going to complain. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Funnily enough, actually. About, about whatever. Um a photographer I used to get inspiration from, I looked on their website, years ago this was, and on the um, inquiry form, just before they filled it out, she wrote on the top, and it's not it's not word for word, but basically it said, you will be disappointed in your photos. And then she went into <laughs> an explanation. I thought, this is bizarre. How can you put that on your website? And she basically just said that, in your eyes, it's going to be the best day of your life. Your photos are never going to be able to represent what you see and remember, and especially when it's like six weeks after, you're gonna you're gonna have built up this big expectation. You will be disappointed in your photos. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit! And you know what? Like, I think there is a little bit of truth to that. I just think the majority of people come to that realisation when they are looking at photos. I mean, like, our photographs, I love our photographs, but they weren't, like, the most incredible photographs in the world on our wedding day. Like, but it was great because it was just all of us together as one, like, happy family. You know, we had a great day. So that's what I really loved about the photos. Yeah. It wasn't anything technical or anything fancy. It was just documenting the day. But I think, yeah, I think people get a little bit sideswept, don't they, and forget 
the reality of things. So, yeah, maybe maybe yeah. we should all maybe we should all say and that's all say to uh, to our potential that clients that, that you will you will think website. your photos are shit, but book me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think there's some truth in that. I'll be honest. The the I always used to worry about this stuff a lot. Um, I don't know if you've ever felt like this, but I went through a, a period of time, like earlier on in doing this, where I, I kind of had this, um, a lot of uh, kind of anxiety around delivering stuff because I was like, it was, I really wanted them to like it, obviously, mm-hmm. but because of what you've just said, and I felt like you're trying to deliver on something and you don't really know what their expectations are. Yeah. You, you, you try to manage them. And that's, that's kind of the thing I, I kind of learned as I went through, it's all about communication. So yeah. like managing that delivery thing so that you don't get those emails chasing you up all the time while you're trying to, you know, kind of get through the edits and stuff in the, in the middle of season, main wedding season and being able to, so manage those expectations, but also, like you said, I, I changed my whole thing because I, uh, my brand is built around like, I want to capture amazing memories. Yeah. So I moved away from, I want, I want to capture something that um, is the most creative thing you've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because- You're 100%, yeah. yeah. Because if you're expecting just to have great memories of the people that you care about, and you want to see the kind of emotion and the fun and the love and all that, that's great because that's what you're going to see. Yeah. As long as that's how it was, you know, you're going to see whatever you what, whatever you genuinely were mm-hmm. feeling on your wedding day. That's what I'm going to capture. Yeah. So if it if there's not that energy, then hopefully that's not kind of your personality. So you won't be expecting it. Put some life in there. Put some live music in there. No energy. Yeah. Get some live music. And then. In there. But rather than me kind of like worrying that it's not the most creative thing and they're going to be expecting something that they're not going to see because it, yeah. it depends on the couple, it depends on the weather, it depends on the venue, you know, it, it, it depends on all those things as to how amazing stuff is, mm-hmm. doesn't it? So It does, yeah. Um, I stopped worrying about it once I focused on, I'm just going to capture whatever you are. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and is that the same motto for your photography as well? Yeah, so yeah, more everything. for the photography, the video. Right. I don't worry really about that at all these days. But whereas the photos, I could, you know, I used to worry that it would be, you know, is it going to be, are the photos going to be creative enough? Yeah, you know, like the yeah. portraits and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas now I sort of, I, I kind of think, well, it'll be whatever, whatever, whatever you are. Yeah, yeah, whatever you do. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with that. So, yeah, have you got all else to add on any of that, mate? Any other thoughts? No, you've covered the whole lot there, Jules. Apart and, from, uh, yeah. Uh, apart from, yeah, the Google so guy. F- I'm going to call him the Google fill- guy because I don't know Google who he guy. is. I filled yeah. you in on all the details. Yeah, anyway, you so you're all caught up. You don't have yeah. to go through. I better, reading. I better go and check my Google account see if it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. I could do with doing some SEO. <laughs> Right, so this week's Song of the Week from Musicbed, not sponsored at this point in time, um, is My Whole Life, uh, My Whole Life for This by Chapters, um, the alternative version. Have you ever used any Chapters songs from Musicbed, mate? Uh, No, I haven't actually. Well, you should. I mean, they are like the, they are the typical wedding... Okay. Uh, music okay. You know what? Providers. I need some music for a wedding video, so I'll have a look at that. It's C H P T R S chapters. Okay, I'll check it out. Um, but this this particular song, I don't know if you'd use this one, but um, I used it recently. I've used, in fact, I've used it a few times. Um, it's a really happy, upbeat kind of indie song. Um, so the couple that I've just done, I've just, the film I've just delivered last week. Uh, they mainly wanted music. They didn't want kind of loads of um, audio speaking in there. So uh, I kind of 
used a bit of the instrumental, but then used the vocal version as well. And they they were quite into. They wanted really upbeat feel to it, but they weren't like into kind of dancey type music, EDM type stuff. They want you know. So this like it. They were more into like indie music. Yeah. But this had that like uh, really upbeat song. So yeah, for anybody listening, if you're looking for a song like that, like an upbeat indie song, that one is really good and it should be playing about now um, when I put it in on the edit so and, yeah and bre- that's break, breaking news before we go we oh, have to go quickly news. now we've managed to do a podcast under an hour well we better hurry up and finish it before yeah, we, we have. mess that up yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're getting there Jules we're getting there cool right well we'll wrap it up there thank you everyone for listening to this one and uh, we'll catch you again in the next episode Oh, for now.